The weather outside is frightful, but in here it's very delightful. Well, since you know a place to go, let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. Hi, welcome. I turned my phone off for seven days. It was supposed to be seven days, and then it turned into 10 days, and it turned into me being a completely different person. <laughs> I feel like I've changed so much in such a short amount of time. Maybe you found this video because your spirit, your soul is calling out to you to take a break, to reset, to unplug. Especially if you are a small business owner like myself, I work online, social media is my job, using my phones, using my iPad is my job. So imagine just giving yourself permission to eject, to fully eject and turn everything off. It was difficult. The first few days were me just trying to fully let go. I kept holding on. <laughs> I was like, oh, I have to schedule content. I did so much. I spent the whole week before just preparing to be gone and that fear of failing, that fear of falling behind. So much so that I, I was like, okay, I have to create this and schedule this. And there's another social media page that I manage. So I had a lot of pressure. It was a very stressful week before I finally turned my phone off. So much so that when I turned it off, I felt this huge weight lifted off of my shoulders. Oh, I felt like I could breathe. I think nobody really talks about, maybe people talk about it and I just, I'm not watching it, but a lot of people talk about, you know, getting off the corporate ladder, getting out of the nine to five and then starting your own businesses and being your own boss. But I feel like I need to talk about the fact that it's its own rat race in itself. And there's a lot of things that you're not really taught and you have to figure it all out on your own or figure it out as you go, figure out how to have that work-life balance. For those of you guys that are entrepreneurs or solopreneurs, you're starting your own YouTube channel, which do it, start it, start it, start it. This is your sign. Just do it you know that it takes over your whole life. <laughs> like your work becomes your life. The, the lines between personal life and work life are easily blurred, especially when my work life is sharing my personal life and the phone that's supposed to be a personal thing to keep us connected to people we love, easy access to call my husband or to call whatever and to do things. It, quickly becomes this habit that is not always healthy. So I was feeling it. I was feeling the pull to hit the pause button. For those of you that are new here, hi, I'm Sin. I am the Afro in Afro-Greek couple. My husband is the Greek. I'm Nigerian American. Uh, my husband is Stavros. You will see a lot of me on this channel. Sometimes you may see him, sometimes you may not. He just does his own thing. We love that for him, you know, he is the king of his own kingdom. And it's interesting because right now we are kind of on two separate journeys. I feel like we're, we're parallel, but I definitely found, and I'm finding myself going into my own world. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later as I tell you what I spent my time doing these past 10 days. And you may not have noticed that I was offline because I scheduled some content. It's like a way of like keeping my foot in the door. That, that fear of falling behind, that fear of failure. And to be honest, now that I'm back in it, I can kind of see how perhaps the algorithms on all the platforms do sort of punish you a little bit, maybe, I don't know. Could be in my head. Do they punish you a little bit for not posting or for not keeping it going? You know, there is that fear that we all carry of not being good enough, not doing enough, that guilt. Oh my gosh, I didn't realize how much guilt I was carrying. The first day, I call it day 0.5. <laughs> because I was like, oh, I have to turn it off today. But then there was this constant feeling of, oh, there's something else to do. Oh, there's something else I should do. Oh, oh man, I should do this. Like everything seemed so important. 
And then by day three, which was the official day one when everything was off, I realized, wow, big weight off my shoulders. And as the days went by, I started recalibrating the real me, my true north, you know, started to appear. And I was like, oh my God, I, have be I was in a fog of just brrrr. And I have ADHD symptoms for those of you that, that don't know. And I've had them for a while since I was young. I've had many things since I was young. Been up in the ether, you know, we'll talk more about that. <laughs> <laughs> Slowly, I'll reveal more to you guys as the as we get to know each other on this channel. And because I'm in the process of writing a book, there's so much truth that I'm revealing that it's, it's still a little bit vulnerable to share on camera. We will get there step by step. So I have some ADHD symptoms, but at the same time, I'm really proud of myself because I grew up knowing what I needed to feel good and what I needed to feel balanced, what brought me peace, what helped me feel more calm, more level-headed. And I discovered yoga years ago, meditation. When I went through my spiritual awakening, I started to fall in love with silence. I started to fall in love with zipping it, throwing away the key, doing silent retreats, meditation courses, yoga retreats. I became a yoga instructor. So I have these two sides to me where I can be very chaotic, but at the same time, I am so chill, so calm. If you know Ayurveda, I'm heavy in the kapha uh, dosha in Ayurveda, kapha pitta. But sometimes I feel, feel like I've been this year and more in my kapha vata. That's for those that know Ayurveda, okay? And I've done Dhamma Vipassana courses, which is a 10 day meditation silent course. I've done two of them. I've volunteered in them. I'm a donor to Vipassana courses around the world. I'll link it below for those that are interested. But isn't it amazing? The gift of silence. Part of me turning off my phone and my iPads and devices was I wanted to practice silence. I wanted to kind of give myself an at-home Vipassana 10 days of silence. And for those of you that are wondering, Vipassana is absolutely free, by the way. You can do this at any time. This is not sponsored. I'm not trying to tell you what to do. But you don't even have to jump in all the way and do a full 10 days. I hope that this video can inspire you to take a day, take an hour, take a weekend to just disconnect from the usual because I really did not realize how <laughs> in the loop I was, like how, oh, there was just so much I dug into, a lot came up to the surface, a lot of healing it happened th those 10 days and is still happening, a lot of epiphanies, a lot of revelations, and the silent part of the 10 days was huge. Me and Stavros, my husband, were actually supposed to do it together, and then I think a few days before he got a call that there was actually a scuba diving training course and stuff happening with his passion, scuba diving, and he's a scuba diving instructor. And so I was like, oh, look at God, it's faith, it's destined, the angels are working, they're doing their thing, it's meant to be. You just gotta do you, baby, and I'ma do me. I still want us to kind of meet in the middle a little bit, so when you come home, if you can, if to try to just practice what I'm practicing a little bit, like try to switch the phone off or, or pop it in the drawer, come home and leave it all at the door. And while he was here, he was silent. There were a few moments where things came up <laughs> that were a bit distracting in, in his life, in our life that we share together, but mainly on his side of things with Greece and there was like a holiday party that he felt like he really wanted to go to. And he was like, please, please, please go with me to this holiday party. All of this happened like a few days before I officially started my silence. So I decided to go to the holiday party, okay? S wasn't doing it with me, okay? I'm doing this on my own, no worries. I've done that before, let's go. And meanwhile, everything around me like so much was happening. S was dealing with some drama. S had his scuba school. And here I just was right here by the fireplace. <laughs> trying to just 
practice zipping it and keeping quiet. On the first day, I remembered that there was something I forgot to do. I wanted to order our merch, the new merch that we designed to order it so it would come in time for us to you know, use it in videos for Vlogmas for December. So I was like, oh no, I have to order it today. <laughs> okay, there I was holding on. I was like, damn. So I had to open up my iPad the first day. My phones were off at this point, but I was like, okay, open up the iPad, just do this one thing, place the orders. I spent like an hour just trying to get that done, maybe even more. S, okay, what do you want? What do I want? Okay, what are we ordering? Blah, 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 blah. Ordered that. And then I was officially free. <sighs> Deep breath in. And I realized as I talk about this that a lot of you guys don't have the luxury to do this, right? You may have big, big responsibilities like kids or you actually have to check in with someone, you have a job that you have to go to. And I was thinking about another element of it, the fact that I live in Greece away from all of my family and I've lived away from most of my family for years, that I was reflecting on the blessing that I am able to kind of be removed from everything. Because I was witnessing Stavros in the middle of like, just stuff, his own guilt and obligations and this and that and family and this, like just stuff that I was like, wow, I'm so blessed and grateful and proud of myself that I chose and was brave enough to let go. I still remember the, the process of trying to let go of that, like all the guilt I, I felt leaving my mom for the first time I ever like decided to move abroad. And so it brought a lot of those memories flooding back and a lot of gratitude that, wow, Nobody's calling me. I don't really have to talk to anybody about this. I don't really have to do a big drama with anyone to say, hey, I'm turning off my phone. You know, for S, it would be a big thing. You'd have to call his mom. You have to call his sister. You would have to tell so many people like, oh, I'm, <laughs> you know, but for me, I don't even think I told my mom. I think I told my sister and I just told her to kind of tell everybody. Um, maybe I told my mom through Stavros day one because I forgot or something like that but how lucky that I could just drop out of life and I realized that I can just drop out the first time I ever did drop out I did Vipassana I went to Thailand for 10 days and I did the 10 day course and I was dropped out of life you know you check your phone in your phone is in a lock box you can't even use your phone you can't access it no journals, no nothing in a completely different country, you know. Everyone knew where I was, of course, like my sister and my mom. And after those 10 days, I realized like, wow, the world keeps spinning. 10 days is nothing. Like it flew by so fast and nothing changed outside of me. You know, everything changed more so within me. So this time around, I wasn't really tripping about being disconnected from people. Like I wanted that. I wanted to be disconnected from the world of social media. I didn't really have to worry about my people as much. I love all my friends. I love the people close to me. I feel like I have such a fantastic relationship with my friends and family. I'm so grateful. Like nobody really calls me, you know, my phone is always on DND. Like I have such a good rapport with my friendships to where if they need me, if something is an emergency, they know how to get me. We send WhatsApp voice notes back and forth. And these relationships and this kind of system of communicating with the people that I love, I guess it was built over years of just not being around, always being at a distance from the people closest to me always being alone. I spent all of lockdown in New Zealand completely alone. Who can relate? <laughs> completely alone, living in this like little trojo villa, this like, what do you call it? Like almost like a trailer house, like a little box house, tiny house kind of thing. Oh, anyway, story for another time. So that's a little bit of the backstory of, of me. And I know some of you guys are thinking, oh, there's no way I can turn off my phone, not even for a day. Maybe you can, maybe that doesn't have to be true. Maybe you start slowly 
and I am deciding to incorporate this into my weeks, even into my days. Like I'm forever changed. Like I needed that reset. I noticed I don't even use my phone the same way. I want to do silent Sundays, something like that, you know, a day, a week, or even a weekend, a month for both of us, me and Stavros, to just be silent, to be more in meditation, practice our yoga, do our walks. And so that's what I did those 10 days. I did a lot of walking. I did lots of stretching and yoga and just practicing being present in my body, being present in the moment. A lot of the time, I didn't even know what time it was. I think on day two or three, I had to find a little tiny clock and give it to Stavros to set it for me, just so I would know what time it was. And I spent a lot of time walking in the woods and just reintroducing myself to this neighborhood with fresh eyes and with so much gratitude. I remember the times I, I would feel like I was stuck and I would feel all these really difficult feelings because I was still adjusting and kind of shedding old skin. And it was really hard to be here. And now that I'm so grounded and I love being here, I can kind of see the roads and the streets I used to walk through with fear or with anxiety. and this time around walking through them with so much peace, oh, so much ease. And I did a lot of writing, you guys. I had this little journal with me. I did so much writing and I allowed myself to have this old phone. It doesn't even work, it just, it works, but it only has access to Wi-Fi. So I'm able to download things. I downloaded a few albums and a few audiobooks, a few podcast episodes that I've been wanting to catch up on, some jazz albums that I wanted to actually listen to from start to finish. Like when was the last time you listened to an album and gave it your full attention from start to finish? The nice thing about practicing silence once in a while in your life is you practice listening and that's another reason why I love audiobooks or like falling to sleep with like sleep audiobooks and stuff like that you're practicing actively listening and I think that's such a good and beautiful practice so let me take a look at some things I wrote the first day I was listening to um Priyanka Chopra's actually, I started her audiobook, her memoir that I've wanted to start. I'm kind of in a memoir era, I guess, because I'm working on mine. So I was listening to some memoirs and listening to some podcasts about memoir writing. And that was so fun. It filled me up with so much joy. At the start of this year, I remember saying that I wanted to focus this year on writing. And... That's not really what happened. I ended up being so focused on building this social media business and starting this page, AKA this business with my husband and wanting to use it to be our main income. And it was a lot of work. It still is a lot of work, but taking a break from it really helped to shift my perspective around all of it and to really see how in some ways I'd been working harder instead of smarter. I'd been overthinking things and overcomplicating things when I could just be taking it a more simpler, consistent approach to it. So I had lots of aha moments about that, lots of just waking up out of bed and taking a glass of water and quickly running to my journal just to write down things. I got to the point where so much was coming through that I couldn't write fast enough. <laughs> so because I had this little backup phone, I um, would record into it. And I didn't worry, I didn't use this phone for anything else other than to record and to listen to albums. And I was really good about that. Like I didn't feel like I was tempted. I had one day where I was, my fingers almost went like looking for the usual stuff that my fingers usually do. Like, okay, open up YouTube, open up Instagram. Okay, schedule, what am I doing? What are, you know, <laughs> the franticness and the chaoticness sometimes of content creation. And I think most of all, it was the guilt. I had so much guilt, this feeling of like, I'm not good enough, it's not good enough, I'm never doing enough, like always feeling like I was behind and I just was not enough and it was not enough. 
and not giving myself enough credit for my successes and for my tiny achievements and not appreciating the journey of it. You know, I think that happens to all of us. And I just really noticed how so much weight was lifted every single day. I got further and further into silence. I started to find myself again. And I started to get almost like addicted to the peace, the new habit of coming home from a walk, taking off my sweater, getting excited about opening the fireplace. And I would sit here and, and see visions in the fireplace. <laughs> it was the best freaking thing, guys. I wrote like a new strategy, 2025 strategy. Like things were just coming to me. Less is more, of course. Um, new rules. And I said, it's amazing how illuminating a quick walk in nature can be, especially when you're a little bit high on life, <laughs> a little bit high on gratitude. This fire is getting hot, 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 hot. I'm trying to find some interesting things that I wrote to share with you guys. In the meantime, while I find it, do you mind watching the fireplace and just sitting with me and maybe just keeping the video on so that way it can support my watch time and our channel growth. I'm gonna be sharing with you guys a lot more of the journey of behind the scenes, trying to grow this YouTube channel in hopes that it also motivates you and makes you feel like you're not alone. We're both in this together, trying to start these new journeys, these new chapters, these new businesses, whether or not it's a YouTube channel for you. It's just nice to feel like we're in it together, we're not alone. And sometimes watching someone else picking themselves up by their bootstraps can motivate you and inspire you to do the same. So even on days when I don't feel like it, like today I almost talked to myself out of sitting here and doing this. Here I am, I'm sitting here and I'm doing this, <laughs> okay? I wrote here, you don't have to do two things at once. It doesn't have to be all or nothing. Yeah, it's okay to take these breaks. Like all these things we understand logically, but our body doesn't, have that practice or that habit of it yet we have a habit of constantly looking for something and looking for more one thing that i did is i um removed my youtube notifications so on my youtube homepage, let me see if i can show you guys this do i have youtube on here again youtube homepage. when i open youtube it now looks like this like there's nothing to see because one of the things that i noticed was really hard for me is because i work on youtube as well I would open YouTube to do something for work for one of my pages and then I'd realize I got distracted by something I saw on the homepage. And so I'm kind of taking this break where I don't have any recommendations. I don't have any watch history. There's a way to do this. Just YouTube it. I YouTubed it to see how to do it. It's like a few steps, but once you finally do it, oh my gosh, it's game changing. Like I feel like I have more time now to do the things that I actually want to do and do the things that I love and most importantly to prioritize my writing so even my writing sometimes I can't even read it don't let this matter so much to you Don't let this matter so much to you. I was referring to a little writing I wrote about, you know, the pressure you feel to like keep it all going. You finally grow your channel or we grow, we grew our Instagram to 180K followers now. And there's this like invisible weight that lands on you, this feeling of like, oh, well, I don't want to lose them. Like you're trying to almost please people in a new way. You're trying to keep the business or keep people. And I, I just find it so funny because we're not even making fun money off of Instagram, yet there I was feeling the weight that would drag me down and keep me from doing the things that could even bring me more money. Just all that invisible pressure, all of that energy spent overthinking and worrying or doubting or just feeling like I'm not good enough. Don't worry, it's a crazy world out there and our minds have blind spots. Silent days, walks in nature will help keep you in check and will help smooth out the edges. Yeah, 
I'm home from another short walk. Remember when I used to make 20K a year or less, when I used to make $6 an hour at McDonald's, then I started making $14 an hour and I got a raise and I was working 40 hours a week and I was only making 20K a year. Remember those days when that was enough? Wow. <laughs> I literally wrote wow in all caps exclamation point. When I used to drive Uber, Postmates, Instacart, when I used to do all these things and when all that you've built, all that you've created, all that you've sacrificed and all that you allowed yourself to be brave to pursue. You don't have to do two things at once, not anymore. That was the old you. And it doesn't have to be all or nothing. Name five of your favorite things right now. I was like talking to myself and I did it. I said, number one, Stavros. <laughs> number two, making love to Stavros. Number three, food. Number four, music. Number five, the sea. Number 5.5, being married to Stavros. <laughs> Favorite show of 2024, Supercell, Supercell, Supercell. I was just kind of like, just randomly letting thoughts come to me and writing as I go. Did you guys watch Supercell on Netflix? Oh, such a good show. Written, created, directed by a Nigerian, by the way. Ashe. Ninja to the world. More of things that I wrote. Focus on the good things in life and ignore the things you can't control. Being more in the moment, present in the room, observing, smiling, listening, complimenting. Speak only of love. Allow it, allow it to flow from you, flow to you. And I was on my period. I wrote, I just noticed this is the best second day of my period that I've ever had in a long time. The pain and discomfort is there, but I'm not paying much attention to it. Maybe because I was doing so much walking as well and I was the, the cortisol level was down. There was less stress in general. Yeah. Art is just pouring out of me. So many words, so many ideas, so much inspiration. Wow. Quiet time silence is the key. Most people spend their whole lives never slowing down to listen to the rain. I think it was raining this day and I was just looking out the window for a while and then I started writing about it. Most people spend their whole lives never slowing down to just listen to the rain, not just hear it, to really listen. It's no coincidence that it's raining today, by the way. It's a blessing and I'm bleeding. It's my day one and it's a full moon weekend. It's all connected. Yeah. I wrote a song randomly. I think I recorded it. You know, I always got to keep a recording. It's the producer in me. I'm back in my music days when I used to spend so much time songwriting and music producing. I'm so used to like always needing to record things because I forget things a lot. So I was walking on the beach. You can hear the waves. Today is day one. Today is day one. Let's hear it. Okay. Uh, seven days. But I like to think of it more as day 0 0.5 because Tavros and I are still getting used to staying silent. But it is the perfect beach day. You can hear the water behind me. Cloudy. The water is not very cold at all. I wanted to stay in a long time. I can see all the space clearing in my mind, so many ideas coming through. I'm so grateful. As I was laying in the water, looking up at the sky, I thought, this is heaven. Mm -hmm. The fact that I, we can have the sea and the sky at the same time. Maybe heaven doesn't exist. Maybe this is it. Aww. These tiny moments. Like last night, S and I, by the fireplace, making love and kissing, talking. Wow. Imagine if scrolling was something we only did once in a while. Kind of like the way we only see certain friends once in a while and we only travel once in a while or do fun things on the weekends once in a while. And we 
didn't do it when we were around other people because we'd rather spend time with the people we love rather than being side by side scrolling yeah i feel like a lot of the time during my silent week i just notice ways in which our world is is just upside down <laughs> you know i mean we are all floating on a rock in the middle of a black abyss which is crazy to even think about but i think many things like if we knew if we knew which we do that this life was short and we're we're all on a ticking clock you know we don't know when our clock our time is going to expire we don't know when it's going to be our time to just be done living and imagine if we treated it in such a way you know as this precious thing that it actually is this thing that is not guaranteed and is such a gift and a blessing those moments of realizing like wow maybe this is heaven just this the beach or just the sky today or the sunset today this moment of peace today i think we spend a lot of time side by side with people that we love or people that we want to get to know and we don't actually talk we don't know their stories we don't tell the truth we don't share what we're really thinking and we spend a lot of time doing things that i don't think we really want to do it's just a habit that our mind or our body is used to getting some sort of pleasure or joy from that and so i want to change that i want to spend all the time that i have with the person that i love and i want scrolling and those moments watching youtube videos to be like something i do once in a while so if you find that you're struggling for time, first of all, if, you're, if you feel overstimulated, if, you f if you're feeling lost, if you're just feeling disconnected from life, it may be time to really disconnect and spend less time working or less time online, bringing the work-life balance back. We all have to work, we all have to make money, we got food to eat, we have bills to pay. But isn't it funny that when we have less, we appreciate more, we have more life at times when we have less money. You know, like when you go to countries where they're technically living in poverty or they're all sharing this tiny space, people that have been around that are working their butt off and they don't really have anything, but they are so happy. You know, they've, they've learned and trained themselves to just be in the moment and for the moment to be okay. A book I would recommend that's sitting on this shelf a few books that I love that are sitting on this shelf right now. The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. This is the Greek version. Stavros love that. I love Eckhart, you know. What Shamu Taught Me About Life, Love and Marriage. This is a fantastic read and so funny and such a quick read. Some Swamis are fat. I resonate with this one. It's written by an author who's also a Cancerian. I met her while I was living in Hawaii like 10 years ago. She just happened to be at this bookshop signing a few books and I grabbed it and she just inspires me to be a writer for for a writer's sake and you don't have to be a New York Times bestseller to be a writer and to love writing and to claim that you are a writer and you create work um, and the pocket Pima Chondrone someone gave me this in New Zealand a Cancerian I met while I was in New Zealand yeah so some fun little quick reads there's some more practical reads here that stavros loves the psychology of money and um rich dad poor dad i like to think of money and abundance as a more spiritual pursuit as the more aligned you are the more grateful you are the more balanced you are everything just starts to come to you everything that you need all the resources, all the tools, all the wisdom, it's already within you. It will come, it will come, it will come. It will find you, you will find it. You will always be guided, protected, always be led and want for nothing. Once you've got God, once you've got spirit, once you're connected to something higher and that something higher could just be your own awareness and realization that life is fleeting and your purpose in life is to just simply enjoy your life and to be so grateful and so aware of it all and so awake, you know. Third eye. I'm happy, I'm happy, I'm so blessed. This was day one, the song I sang on the beach. I'm happy, I'm happy, I'm so blessed. 
Thank you, God and Jesus. Thank you to the universe. Oh, this was day 0 0.5 technically. Like that's how weightless I felt. That's how much pressure was off my shoulders. Like I was so jazzed. I was like walking on the beach like, oh, I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm so blessed. Thank you, God and Jesus. Thank you to the universe. Oh, I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm back in my writing era. I'm back in my songwriting era. I'm about to pull my guitar out of the, the like corner it's been stuck in. And I'm really, really excited to continue writing. I'm excited for the day that we all we remember this day when I'm telling you how I'm starting the process of writing this memoir. And the day that I'm like at some book signing, some red carpet for the premiere of the next Netflix movie or the Netflix series or the hell, the box office movie or series that's based on my life. <gasps> Amen. It is done. I'm speaking it into existence. It is done. It's going to take some time, but... One thing I know is the process of diving into this, the process of letting go and restoring balance and writing is bringing me so much joy. And I just want to focus on the joy, follow the fun and everything else will come. I love you. Thank you for watching. If you would like to support, please let this video play again in the background, perhaps. If you have some money to spend, consider buying um, one of our merch that I designed that's down there. We appreciate it. I will not block my blessing. I'm open to receiving, child, okay? <laughs> you can do so on Instagram. Instagram is a better place to, to do gifts and donations on our reels there or to subscribe to our Instagram area over there because we get 100% of the profit where on YouTube takes 30% of everything anything you give us okay um, and please if you are a new youtuber comment down below so I can pop over to your page and click on some of your videos and let that shit play uh, if this inspired you in some way comment below so we can see you so we can give you some love some light and maybe support something you are working on or something you created thank you thank you thank you enjoy the fireplace guys we got that on our quick little trip to Paris. Oh, I forgot to tell you guys, the trip to Paris was like a, a bonus gift. I planned the silent time before Paris and being in Paris after getting my grounded balance self back was so amazing. I felt like I was more present. I enjoyed it so much more. I didn't have any guilt about working. I was fully there and had so much fun. And we were just there for three days. Look, Stoffers just made me a nice little dinner. I wanted breakfast for dinner because <laughs> I fasted all day by accident. And I was craving this breakfast when I originally woke up at like 5 a.m. to do a live stream. <laughs> Shout out to all my Cancerians. And I didn't get to have this breakfast I was craving. So I'm going to have that. Thank you so much for watching. If you watched all the way to the end, like, can you please comment below? Like, yep, I watched all the way to the end. I'm just so curious who those people are. Even if you don't comment all the time, can you do me a favor? Do me a solid so I can see your beautiful face. Oh, Stavros is coming. Let me get off the phone. Bye!